This is the nicest way I know to cook the humble chicken breast. It's very old-fashioned, but quite delicious. You can do it with any skin-on, mostly boneless breast, but I'm going to show you how to butcher this from a whole chicken yourself. This is a pretty big chicken, but it would work well with a smaller bird, too. Smaller knives are useful for boning work. I'm just using my paring knife, though I'm going to sharpen it right before we proceed. One reason the pros make this look so easy is they have boning knives as sharp as razor blades. Got to wash the metal shavings off of that now. Anyway, cutting the breast off of a cooked or raw chicken is much easier if you take the wishbone out first, the clavicle bone up where the neck used to be. Just feel around for it, make a few little cuts to get started, and then you can just peel the bone out of the meat with your fingers. The wishbone might come out in two pieces. That's totally fine. It's kind of weird anyway how the two clavicles are fused into a single bone on a bird. Time to cut the wing. And it's easier to do this part if you flip the bird around, spine facing you, cut through the elbow joint. I do the skin first, and then I dislocate the joint so that I know exactly where to cut because I'm not a professional, and then I cut through. Now we need to strip the meat off of that humerus bone. I'm cutting through the meat all the way around, straight down to the bone, circumnavigating the bone. Then I'll scrape the meat up toward the elbow and just cut it off. If there's any ugly-looking tissue clinging to the elbow, you can actually pick that off more easily after it's cooked. Now we'll flip the bird around, breast side up, cut the skin connecting the breast to the leg quarters, then feel for the sternum or the breastbone running down the middle and start slicing just to the side of the breastbone. The motion that works really well is peeling. Peel the breast meat off the bone, one little slash at a time, letting your knife just follow the bones. Peel the meat off, and then the last tricky thing to do is to cut through the shoulder joint. Just get it exposed, cut through it all the way down through the skin, and now you have what they used to call an airline breast. That's how old-fashioned this is. It's from the days when we associated air travel with luxury, not misery. <laughs> I like to peel off the tenderloin, which is the chicken finger muscle that hangs underneath the breast. You get cleaner slices if you take this off and use it for something else. Speaking of which, I'll cut off the legs and then the thighs to be cooked another day. The carcass will go into the freezer for stock, and then I'm going to brine this chicken. I'm not a huge fan of poultry brines, but most people seem to love them, so here we go with just enough water to submerge the meat. I've seen brine solutions anywhere from 3 to 10% salt by weight. I'd use less salt if I was going to brine this overnight, but for a quick one or two hour brine, I'll use something closer to 10% salt. You could put some other flavors in there now too. I'm just doing a little sugar, which makes a difference. Lots of other flavor molecules are too big to enter through the semi-permeable cell membranes of meat. And I don't care what any famous chef says, you manifestly do not have to boil this. Most of the salt will dissolve upon stirring, and the rest will dissolve pretty quickly as this sits. I might as well brine all of my chicken pieces now, not just the breasts, and I'll let those brine for an hour or two. Not a super quick dinner. For that, you want HelloFresh, sponsor of this video. When the spring sunshine is calling you out, you don't have to go to an expensive restaurant. HelloFresh has bright green seasonal recipes that we use to feed the family about about three times a week around here. I could do each of these in 30 minutes or less. I'll do the sun-dried tomato risotto. We usually order meatless boxes just to get more veggies in our diet, but they've got meal plans for nearly any diet or taste. And I don't have to go to the grocery store and risk forgetting something. It's all here for 25% less money than a similar takeout meal. All seasonal ingredients are picked at the peak of ripeness and they travel from the farm to you in less than seven days. And you choose the delivery days. I love that everything is pre-portioned so there will be no food waste, no leftover ingredients for me to figure out how to use later. Creamy and vegetal and delicious, that is. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code ADAMRAGUSIA16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. 16 free meals with my code ADAMRAGUSIA16 at HelloFresh.com. Thank you, HelloFresh. Okay, I gotta blot this meat 
dry so that I can brown it. The meat's been in the brine for like an hour and a half. I wouldn't go much longer than that at 10% salt or else the meat will be way too salty. But the brine has seasoned the interior of the meat and altered the proteins so that they'll retain more juice during cooking. I'm only seasoning with pepper. There's enough salt in there already. What really helps is starting these in a cold or nearly cold pan. I've got a little olive oil in there, meat goes in skin side down, and then I'll turn the heat on like medium. If you blast the skin with a lot of heat up front, it tends to stick really badly to the pan and it tends to shrink up prematurely and separate from the meat. Plus, the slow ramp up also renders more fat out from underneath the skin, which gets you a crispier result. I'll take a peek and see if they're brown yet. Looks almost ready. And if you're not using a nonstick pan, I'd recommend grabbing a rigid spatula and scraping under the skin real quick before you flip. And go in at the head of the breast where the skin is wider and less delicate. Just make sure the skin is separated from the pan so that it won't tear when you flip. Now we just brown the other side. And at this stage, you could throw in some crushed garlic cloves. Don't bother peeling. They're just to flavor the cooking fat. I've got some sage, but rosemary or thyme would work well for this. Any of the more oily, resinous herbs. And then I'll melt in a big knob of butter and baste the skin. That looks super sexy. It feels super sexy to do, and it gives amazing flavor to the surface of the chicken. Plus, it makes sure that the chicken is cooking from all sides, not just the bottom. You could bring the whole breast up to temperature by just standing here and basting frequently for a while, though that would work better on a smaller chicken. These are going to take a while to cook, so I will stick my probe thermometer into the deepest part. I'm moving it around until I hit the coldest temperature because I know that must be the core. And in the whole pan goes to the oven at about 400 Fahrenheit, 200 C. About 10 minutes later, I'm at 160 Fahrenheit, 71 C. That's as far as I would ever take white meat because the temperature is going to go up some more as it rests. When I don't need to be super careful about pathogens, I cook white meat a few degrees cooler than that. And if there's a lot of grease in the pan, I would either cook some diced shallots in that grease for the sauce, or I'd pour it out along with all of the spent solids. I want butter in my sauce, but I want emulsified raw butter in my sauce. Deglaze the pan with a little wine or water. If I was just using plain water, I'd give the sauce a squeeze of lemon juice, and I'd definitely use some shallots for sweetness. Pour in those resting juices for sure. Reduce until almost dry, turn off the heat, and then when all the bubbling has ceased, I'm safe to stir in some cold butter. Butter is naturally emulsified, and the emulsion will remain reasonably stable as long as you stir briskly and you don't let the butter get too hot. As much butter as you want to make as much sauce as you want. There you go, super velvety. Taste it for seasoning, but it probably won't need salt. To carve the meat cleanly, again, the secret is a freshly sharpened knife. You'll be less likely to tear the skin that way, though I lost a little piece there. Inevitable. I'm leaving all the slices up against each other to retain heat and juices. The other tricks for clean slices are don't go too thin and don't overcook the chicken. If you overcook white meat, it tends to shred when you cut it. Knife under the breast to transfer the whole thing cleanly to a plate, and then you can slightly fan out the slices if you want. You'll get better sauce coverage that way. I'm having this with some mash. If you don't know, here's how I'm making mash these days. Yukon gold potatoes, don't bother peeling, cut into smaller pieces than I used to do. Rinse and drain to wash away free starch that I released by cutting open some cells. Free starch makes mash gluey. Put in just enough fresh water to cover. Put the heat on low and hold it there for about an hour. This weakens the bonds between potato cells while keeping the cells themselves reasonably stable and unlikely to burst. Bring it up to a boil and cook until fork tender. I like to put a cup in the sink to catch some of my boil water. Drain, melt in an obscene amount of butter, and sometimes I put in some fresh minced garlic at this point. I like whipped potatoes potatoes, but you can mash them however you'd like. Put in some liquid to get the texture that you like, and I find the potato boil water has a lot more flavor than milk. Season with salt and pepper to taste. Today I am making champ, which is Irish-style mash where you put in lots of sliced green onions at the last minute. This makes the mash serve as a vegetable and a starch. And now we have a side that will soak up all of our extra sauce. Just pour that delicious sauce over everything. You know, when I was a kid, I remember going to a fancy restaurant and thinking, how do they make this chicken taste so milky? And the answer is butter. The stripped bone is mostly just for decoration, but it makes a nice handle too. 
think of the golden age of air travel as you eat this so fancy.